Hello and welcome to an episode of Advanced GIS. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at GIS workflows and how to use Python programming and model builder to create reproducible workflows in ArcGIS Pro. Where we left off last time, we created a model builder workflow for taking an input DEM raster, an input outlet coordinates table, and running it through a series of geoprocessing tools in order for us to create an output raster watershed layer. We assigned parameters so that the tool could take any input DEM raster, any table, and an input coordinate system so that we can project our geographic coordinate system point locations to match whatever the coordinate system of our input raster layer was. We also assigned a parameter for the snapping distance so that we could adjust that so that it could hopefully correctly identify a point on our flow accumulation raster set with highest flow accumulation associating then the watershed. And we ran the tool in two different ways, but what we wanna look at in this video is how we can actually run this as a script or computer program. We saw in the earlier videos where each of the tools is actually both a graphical user interface in Arc Pro, but also a Python command in Arc Pi. And to get a better look at that, in any of the geoprocessing tools that we've run, for example, the watershed tool, if we come up and we find the help text and we click on the help text, it should open you up to a new browser window where we see the ArcGIS Pro documentation. And if we look at the menu on the right, we do see that there is a syntax that shows you what the watershed function actually does. So in terms of a tool, we see that the tools are actually functions, functions that take input and then produce some kind of return value or output. And in this case, the output raster is the watershed of a contributing area from inputs, which is a flow direction raster, a pore point, and the field that is associated with the pore point. And if we continue to scroll down, we see that there is such a thing as a code sample. And we see that the very first thing that comes up is ArcPy, which is the Python library between the ArcGIS Pro's geoprocessing tools and the Python programming environment. And there are examples here in which you can run the tool, the, out, the watershed tool in this example, using the Python programming environment. So in that case, if every geoprocessing tool in Arc Pro has a corresponding Python command, then it should make sense that a workflow that is full of geoprocesses, that there should be a corresponding process in Python. In Python, a geoprocess or a series of geoprocesses is going to be translated into what's called a script. A script is like a recipe, much like this in graphical form, where we can follow the ovals to the squares with the directions of the arrows. A Python script is a text document where you start from the top and you read line at a time through the text document, and it tells you what to do next, each line of the code. So we can actually get a version of this if we come up to exports in the model builder ribbon, and we see that there is export to Python file. So I'm gonna click that, 
and we see that the tool name shows up, the label that we gave it. It is a good idea to fix your spaces and special characters. So I'm going to use underscores and lowercase. And we see that Python script file is the default file extension, which is .py. And I'll put this on my desktop and click save. So here we see a Python script has been saved to my desktop. But how do you actually visualize a Python script? So scripts in general in programming languages are plain text files. So whatever your favorite plain text file reader or editor is, in this Windows environment, the default would be to use open with, choose another app, and you should be able to find Notepad. So this is the Notepad version of the Python script. And we do see that there is that all important ArcPy at the very top. And we do see that there is some text that says it was generated by Model Builder and the date in which it was gener uh, generated. In general, this is not very pleasant to read because it's plain text and Notepad does nothing to make this more visually appealing. So instead, it's my general preference to use an IDE, which is short for an integrated development environment. So there's my 80 character line. This is Atom. Atom was developed by GitHub and provides a environment for coding a number of different languages, Python being just one of them. Notice the quick difference here when we looked at it in comparison with Notepad. There is coloration to highlight different statements that are important in the Python programming environments. And it's just a little bit easier to navigate with syntax highlighting than in a just plain text editor. There are plenty of different ones available. Uh, this is just the one that I prefer to use. And if we bring this up next to our model builder, so I'll pin that and I'll pin that. All right, let's see if we can figure out what this is doing. So at the very top, we see two import statements, arcpy and from sys import argv. So arcpy, again, is the Python library that allows us to use the geoprocessing tools in ArcGIS. Sys is actually a Python package that comes from the standard Python library and allows us to interact with our system or whatever computer that we're running on. Argv is a way to pass arguments to a system. And we can look at that a little bit more later. All right, the next thing that we see is a DEF. DEF means definition or to define, and then we pass it a name. So we're defining what is SPW shed, which is exactly what we called this model. So we see that the model becomes a function. A function is what we called a geoprocessing tool that takes inputs and returns some kind of an output. So, if a geoprocess is just a function, we see that it's being defined here. And what are the inputs? So here we see the first thing is the input DEM raster layer and is given a default value of DE, Napa DEM. I'm going to align this. So the next input we see is the outlet coordinates table, which is given here as outlet geotxt. 
And then the next thing is the outlet coordinate system. This long bit of text here is the definition of a projected coordinate system of the NAD 1927 UTM zone 10N. And you might be saying, well, why is it in this format? Well, this is the textual definition, which you can look up, or there are other ways in which we can define coordinate systems as we saw back in video one, I believe, where we did the project raster. The next input is the snap distance, which is the default value of 120. And our last is the outlet output watershed raster layer. And we see that the default value is in my file geo database and called an Apple watershed. And the hash here is just to let us know that this is the label, which we call it the special works watershed tool. So these are exactly the parameters that we defined over here in our graphical model with the default values that we gave them as the inputs to our graphical model. All right, the first thing that is in our function says to allow overwriting outputs, change this option to true. ArcPy has an ENV, which has an option called overwrite output, and it is set to false by default. False means that if a layer already exists in an output location, you are not allowed to overwrite it, which means you have to change the output name in order to run the tool again. This was common back in earlier versions of Arc Pro and certainly in Arc Map. Now I believe that true is the default in the software, but we can see that it's being set false here as a precautionary method, just so you don't accidentally run the tool and overwrite something that you didn't mean to do. Obviously, if you wanna be able to run the tool multiple times and change your layers each time, you can change this from false to true. There this tool, the Special Works Watershed tool, uses the Spatial Analyst Toolbox. The Spatial Analyst Toolbox in ArcGIS Pro is an add-on feature, so it costs extra to use. And the extension will be checked out here using the keyword spatial for Spatial Analyst Tools, using the arcpy.checkout extension in order to make sure that those tools are available and if you don't have access to the spatial analyst tools, this will fail and let you know that your license is not able to use this particular tool. Next on the list is an import toolbox, which you can see that it is going to be importing our data management toolbox from ArcGIS toolboxes. So this is where I have downloaded and installed my ArcGIS Pro. So it's in my local app data programs, ArcGIS Pro resources. And it's just pulling the data management toolbox into this environment. This step I feel is, nece is not necessary in most cases, but it, for completeness, they are pulling it in here. All right, and then the first tool, which is called the fill tool, which comes from spatial analysts. The comment here is preceded with the hash. And that is going to be the very first tool that we run. So Napa fill, this is our output layer. We see that it is in C, workspace, advanced GIS, WSHED, GDB, Napa fill. Now, if you were wanting to run this to be more generic, what you could do is take away this path de definition, take away this path definition and replace it with just the name Napa fill. And what you could do is set your environment up here so that it knew where to pull from. Notice that this is also pulling from a file geo database. And that's because we defined it. And that's how this is being defined. We can adjust them here if need be. 
Napa Phil was the variable name that we defined here, the green oval. We see that the exact same name is used here. So it says that Napa Phil is a file location, makes a copy of the file location, saves the file location to capital Phil. Then it's going to overwrite the old textual definition to an actual raster layer, ArcPy SA Fill. So, what is ArcPy SA Fill? If you take a look at the help documentation and we come down here to the syntax, we see that Fill takes an input surface raster layer with an optional Z limit. And in a coding sample, you see that for raster fill, you give it a layer, it gives you an output, which is defined here as the return value, which is the output set surface raster after the sinks have been filled. So then we come back over here and we see that fill takes an input surface raster and an optional Z limit. And it should return a raster layer. So it takes fill and it returns a raster fill layer called Napa fill and it saves it. It saves it to your file geo database as an intermediate layer. For example, if you didn't want to save as an intermediate layer, we could have removed this oval and connected this output area, this output arrow directly into flow direction. Or we could simply delete this save, which means that it goes into your file geo database and just pass this nap of fill that we created into the next process, which is flow direction. So this is saved because we asked it to save an output file. There we see it saving in the code. Then we come down to the next process. Napa fill will go to flow direction. Napa flow direction begins with a definition of where it is saved textually. And this text string shows us the location in our file geo database, the output called Napa FDR. So notice that the output name again matches the variable name. We're gonna make a copy of that textual location as called flow direction. Output drop raster, we said we have none, so it is an empty string or undefined. And then NAP FDR is going to take the ArcPy Spatial Analyst Tools flow direction function. Remember, in geoprocessing terms, in Python, they are just functions. And the function takes an input surface raster, force flow equals normal, the output drop raster, which is an empty string, which means none and the flow direction type, which is D8. So if we come over and we take a look to see if that is what matches here. And in flow direction, the syntax, we see that it takes an input surface raster, a force flow and output drop raster and flow direction type. And these optional ones with the optional tell us what is the default. So force flow optional, we see that specifies the edge cells will always flow outward or always flow normal flow rules. So we can assign normal. And we see that this is the default behavior, or we could define it as force. And flow direction type, we also see the default value here is the D8. And the output or the return variable or return value is a flow direction raster data set. So the data type is a raster. And in the coding example here, we see that they use the flow direction, which comes from arcpy.sa. So it's arcpy.sa.flow direction. You give it elevation, you give it a type. All right, so we come back over here and we see that's exactly what's happening. The output is called Napa FDR, which is the variable name. And then because we've asked it to save this green oval, we see that it Napa save. It Napa FDR dot saves to the flow direction. The flow direction was this previous textual string here, which means it's going to save it to your file geo database as Napa underscore FDR. All right.
once we get to this point, we see that the next step is actually the XY table to points. So instead of progressing further, which the next one would be flow accumulation, it actually is going to come down here to this and run the XY table. So just like before, the textual definition of our output for the feature layer is in our watershed GDB, and we have our outlet geo name. Then we run a function from arcpy.management xy table to point. And this function takes an input table, which is our coordinate table that we've defined at the very top of this. It takes an outlet location. So our output feature class is going to go here to our file geodatabase. The X field and the Y field are our lawn and lat. The Z field is undefined. The coordinate system, whenever we import, is almost always GCS 1984. Of course, if it isn't, you'd want to maybe add this as a parameter as well. Notice that this doesn't have an output. So if we look at XY table to points, and we look at the syntax. Notice there's no return value. The output feature class is actually sent as an input and will always create an output. There is no output that we can then potentially save later. So this is always going to save to a file geodatabase or to a location on your computer. So therefore, this is run and it already creates the output where it puts the output here as our second variable input. All right, so once we've run our XY to table foot geo process, outlet geo has been defined, which is here. We can then go to the project tool. So another process project comes from the management toolbox. Our output's called outlet NAD. So here we see outlet NAD. It's in our file geo database, ArcPy management project. So here we see another process under the management toolbox. It takes an input, it defines an output, and it defines the output coordinate system and a transformation method, preserving the shape, max deviation, and vertical. So if we look at that, come down to syntax, rather, yeah, syntax, we see that ArcPy management project takes an input and an output, an output coordinate system, an optional transformation, an input coordinate system, preserving shape, max deviation, and vertical. And we can take a look at what all of these input types need to be. And then we can scroll all the way down to the coding sample to see how the project tool actually works. So you take input features, output features, and the output coordinate system, which is exactly what we're doing here. It also puts a lot of those default values in by default, I guess, just for completeness. So our project tool creates our outlet NAD, which is this in our file geo database. And then we move on to the next process. So it's completed these three here. Actually, it's completed these four here. And then we move on to flow accumulation. Flow accumulation, we take a known output, NAP FAC, save it as a variable called NAP FAC. We save a copy of that to what's called flow accumulation, another variable. And then we overwrite NAP FAC with the ArcPy SA flow accumulation function. So this function runs the flow accumulation tool. It has an in flow direction raster, which is our NAP FDR. NAP FDR is the variable name that we saw up here, which was the output of the flow direction function. Then it has an input weight raster, which by default is an empty string, which means there is none. The data type is float. The flow direction again was D8. And then because we've asked it to save the NAPA FAC, here it saves the NAPA FAC 
to your file geodatabase. All right, next is the arrows point to the snap pour point. So a snap pour point is a pour point process from spatial analyst tools. Here we define textually where it's going to save in your file geodatabase under the variable under the name snap pour. Then we make a copy of the location, calling it snap pour point. Snap pour runs the arcpy tool. So arcpy.sa.snap pour point is the function that runs the snap pour point tool. It takes the input pour point data, which we are assigning as outlet NAD. Outlet NAD was up here, which is the location name in our file geo database that points to a layer that was created based on the project tool. Then the input accumulation raster is NAPA FAC. NAPA FAC is the output of the flow accumulation function. The snap distance is defined here as snap distance, which is the input to our function up here. So we defined it based on the tool. And the pour point field is by default defined as ID. And because we've asked it to save snap pour here as the green oval, we see that it saves the raster to our file geodatabase. And the last process here is the watershed spatial analyst tool, this yellow square here. And watershed is defined as our output watershed raster layer, which was defined up here textually where we're saving it to our file geo database under Napa watershed. Then the output layer is overwritten with the arcpy.sa.watershed function, which runs the watershed geo processing tool. It takes an input flow direction. So the Napa FDR, the flow direction came as the output of the flow direction function. The input pour point is the snap pour, which is the output of the snap pour point function. And the pour point field was default by assigned the string value value. And because we asked it to save it, it then saves the raster layer here. So this is a full set of processes all defined in what's called SPW shed. So what, how do you run a function in Python? So at the very bottom, we see there's an if statement. If name equals main. Main, or rather underscore, underscore, main, underscore, underscore, is a special name given to if a Python script is being called by the Python interpreter. If a Python script is being called by a Python interpreter, it's the name of the current environment is main. So if you run this, this is a true statement. And here it says with arcpy.env manager, Scratch Workplace is Advanced GDB and Workspace is Advanced GDB, SPW Shed, and then you send it any arguments that are read from the tool. The argv1 colon are all of the things that you input over here in the geoprocessing for Spatial Works tool. Special Works Watershed tool. So all of these things get sent to the SW shed in the order that you see here. The input DEM raster layer, the output coordinates table, the output coordinate system, the snap distance, and the output watershed raster layer. And that's the shorthand method of reading arguments from a command line or in this case, they're arguments from the geoprocessing pane. So that's how you make sense out of the Python script. But how do we make this actually work 
outside of the Arc Pro toolbox. And that's what we'll look at in the next video.